Hi, this is Donna Lewis again with the Clark County Park District, and today we're going to read the last few, couple chapters of Alice in Wonderland. So Alice's Adventures in Wonderland is the official title. So today we're going to do the read the Mock Turtle story. So we're meeting the Mock Turtle. So we ended last time with Alice meeting the Griffin. The Queen took her to the Griffin. And then she meets the Mock Turtle. The Mock Turtle story. They had not gone far before they saw the Mock Turtle in the distance, sitting sad and lonely on a little ledge of rock. As they came nearer, Alice could hear him sighing as if his heart would break. This here young lady, so the Griffin wants to know your history, she do. I'll tell it to her, said the Mock Turtle in a deep hollow tone. They sat down and waited. Once, said the Mock Turtle at last with a deep sigh, I was a real turtle. These words were followed by heavy sobbing from the Mock Turtle. When we were little, the Mock Turtle went on at last more calmly, though still sobbing a little now and then, <laughs> we went to school in the sea. The master was an old turtle. We used to call him Tortoise. Why did you call him Tortoise if he wasn't one? Alice asked. We called him Tortoise because he taught us, said the Mock Turtle angrily. Yes, we went to school in the sea, though you may not believe it. We had the best of educations, reeling and writhing, ancient and modern mystery, and theography, also drawing. So, I didn't notice before, but the Mock Turtle has a tear in his eye. So he's pretty sad. Looks like a very strange kind of turtle. So here, I think this is a picture that we'll learn about in the next section, but here's a picture of probably some of his friends from the sea. And how many hours a day did you do lessons, said Alice. 10 hours the first day, said the Mock Turtle, nine the next, and so on. That's the reason they're called lessons, the Griffin remarked, because they lessen from day to day. Tell her something about the games now. The Mock Turtle looked at Alice and tried to speak, but sobs choked his voice. With tears running down his cheeks, he went on again. You have not lived under the sea, so you can have no idea what a delightful thing a lobster quadrille is. No, indeed. What sort of a dance is it? Alice asked. First, the seals, turtles, and so on form into a line along the seashore, said the griffin. Each with a lobster as a partner, cried the mock turtle. Then you throw, then you throw the lobsters, shouted the griffin with a bound into the air, as far out to sea as you can see. Swim after them and turn a somersault in the sea, cried the Mock Turtle, capering wildly about. Change lobsters, yelled the Griffin. Then back to land again, said the Mock Turtle, suddenly dropping his voice. The two creatures who had been jumping around like mad things all this time sat down again very sadly and quietly and looked at Alice. It must be a very pretty dance, said Alice. Would you like to see a little of it, said the Mock Turtle. Very much indeed, said Alice. Come, let's try it, said the Mock Turtle to the Griffin. We can do it without lobsters, you know. So they began solemnly dancing around Alice, every now and then treading on her toes when they passed too close, and waving their fuller paws to mark the time, while the mock turtle sang very slowly and sadly. Thank you. It's a very interesting dance to watch, said Alice, feeling very glad when it was over at last. The griffin said, come, let's hear some of your adventures. So Alice began telling them her adventures from the time when she first saw the white rabbit. Her listeners were perfectly quiet till she got to the part about the caterpillar. And then the mock turtle drew a long breath and said, that's very curious. It's all about as curious as it can be, said the griffin. I should like to hear her try to repeat a poem now, said the mock turtle. How the creatures order one around, thought Alice. She got up and began to repeat a poem, but her head was so full of the lobster quadrille that she hardly knew what she was saying, and the words came out very queer indeed. So again, here's the dance they were talking about. The mock turtle and the griffin. That's different from what I used to say when I was a child, said the griffin. 
It sounds like nonsense, said the Mock Turtle. Would you like the Mock Turtle to sing you a song? The Gryphon said. Oh, yes, please, if the Mock Turtle would be so kind, Alice replied eagerly. The Mock Turtle sighed deeply and then began in a voice choked with sobs to sing. It had just begun when a cry of, the trial's beginning, was heard in the distance. Come on, cried the Gryphon. Taking Alice by the hand, it hurried off without waiting for the end of the song. What trial is it? Alice panted as she ran. But the Gryphon only answered, come on, and ran faster. So now they're leaving the Mock Turtle, and there's Alice with the Gryphon. There's the Mock Turtle over there, singing his song. So, this must be what the trial's about. The next chapter is Who Stole the Tarts? And then we are soon done with our adventures in Wonderland. Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. So who stole the tarts? The king and queen of hearts were seated on their throne with a great crowd assembled around them. All sorts of little birds and beasts as well as a whole pack of cards. The knave was standing before them in chains with soldiers on each side to guard him. Near the king was a white rabbit with a trumpet in one hand and a scroll of parchment in the other. In the very middle of the court was a table with tarts upon it. They looked so good that it made Alice quite hungry to look at them. I wish they'd get the trial done, she thought, and hand out the refreshments. The king, or the judge, was the king. And that's the jury box, thought Alice. And those 12 creatures, I suppose they are the jurors. The 12 jurors were all writing very busily on slates. What are they all doing? Alice whispered to the griffin. They're putting down their names, said the, gri the griffin whispered in reply, for fear they should forget them before the end of the trial. Stupid things, Alice began in a loud voice, but she stopped hastily, for the white rabbit cried out, Silence in the court! And the king put on his spectacles and looked anxiously around to see who was talking. Alice could see that all the jurors were writing, Stupid things, on their slates, and she could even tell that one of them didn't know how to spell stupid, and that he had to ask his neighbor to tell him. Harold, read the accusation, said the king. The white rabbit blew three blasts on the trumpet, and then unrolled the parchment scroll and read as follows. So we've got a lizard, a squirrel, a frog, a ferret, a duck, a stork, a hedgehog, a chicken, all kinds of creatures on the jury. And instead of writing their name, they were writing stupid things as their name. It's a crazy story. The Queen of Hearts. Well, let me make sure I'm in the right spot. So, the White Rabbit blew three blasts on the trumpet and then unrolled the parchment school and read as follows. The Queen of Hearts, she made some tarts, all on a summer day. The Knave of Hearts, he stole those tarts and took them quite away. Consider your verdict, the king said to the jury. Not yet, not yet, the rabbit hastily interrupted. There's a great deal to come before that. The, ra the rabbit blew three blasts on the trumpet and called out, first witness. The first witness was the hatter. He came, on, he came in with a teacup in one hand and a piece of bread and butter in the other. I beg your pardon, ma your majesty, he began for bringing these in, but I hadn't quite finished my tea when I was sent for. Take off your hat, the king said to the hatter. It isn't mine, said the hatter. Stolen, the king exclaimed, turning to the jury, who instantly made a memorandum of the fact. I keep them to sell, the Hatter added as an explanation. I have none of my own, I'm a Hatter. Here the Queen put on her spectacles and began staring hard at the Hatter, who turned pale and fidgeted. Give your evidence, said the King, and don't be nervous, or I'll have you executed on the spot. This did not seem to encourage the witness at all. He kept shifting from one foot to the other, looking uneasily at the Queen, and in his confusion he bit a large piece out of his teacup instead of the bread and butter. Just at this moment, Alice felt a very curious sensation, which puzzled her a good deal until she realized what it was. She was beginning to grow larger again. She thought at first she would get up and leave the court, but on second thought, she decided to remain where she was as long as there was room for her. The queen was still staring at the hatter, and she said to one of the officers of the court, bring me the list of the singers in the last concert, at which point the wretched hatter trembled so much they shook off both of his shoes. Give your evidence, the king replied angrily, or I'll have you executed, whether you're nervous or not. The miserable hatter dropped his teacup and bread and butter and went down on one knee. I'm a poor man, your majesty, he began. You're a very poor speaker, said the king. If that's all you know about it, you may sit down. So here is the court, the king and queen and the, ju and the judges. 
the knave who's on trial, who's in the chains. So if you can see all that. So that is the scene we're at. And here's the Hatter giving his testimony, which he didn't say very much. I'd rather finish my tea, said the Hatter, with an anxious look at the Queen, who was reading the list of singers. You may go, said the King, and the Hatter hurriedly left the court without even waiting to put his shoes on. And just take his head off outside, the Queen added to one of the officers, but the Hatter was out of sight before the officer could get to the door. Call the next witness, said the king. The next witness was the duchess's cook. She carried the pepper box in her hand, and the people near the door began sneezing all at once. Give your evidence, said the king. I won't, said the cook. The king looked anxiously at the white rabbit, who said in a low voice, Your majesty must cross-examine this witness. Well, if I must, I must, the king said with a melancholy air, and after folding his arms and frowning at the cook until his eyes were nearly out of sight, he said in a deep voice, What are the tarts made of? Pepper, mostly, said the cook. Molasses, said a sleepy voice behind her. It was the Dormouse. Turn that Dormouse out of court. I guess she said it more like, turn that Dormouse out of court. The Queen shrieked out, pinch him, off with his whiskers. For some minutes, the whole court was in confusion, and by the time they had settled down again, the cook had disappeared. Never mind, said the King, with an air of great relief. Call the next witness. And he added in an undertone to the Queen, really, my dear, you must cross-examine the next witness. It quite makes my forehead ache. Alice watched the white rabbit as he fumbled over the list. Imagine her surprise when the white rabbit went red out at the top of his shrill little voice, the name Alice. Here, cried Alice, quite forgetting in the flare of the moment how large she had grown in the last few minutes. She jumped up in such a hurry that she tipped over the jury box with the edge of her skirt, sending the jurors sprawling. Oh, I beg your pardon, she exclaimed in a tone of great dismay and began picking them up again as quickly as she could. The trial cannot proceed, the king said the king, until all the jurors are back in their proper places. As soon as the jury had recovered from the shock and their slates and pencils had been found and handed back to them, they set to work very diligently to write out a history of the accident. What do you know about this business? The king said to Alice. Nothing, said Alice. That's very important, said the king, turning to the jury. They were just beginning to write this down on their slates when the white rabbit interrupted. Unimportant, your majesty means, of course, he said in a very respectful tone. Unimportant, of course, I meant, the king said hastily. And after a few minutes, the king, who had been busily writing in his notebook, called out, silence, and read out from his book, Rule 42, all persons more than a mile high to leave the court. Everybody looked at Alice. I'm not a mile high, said Alice. You are, said the king. Nearly two miles high, added the queen. Well, I won't go, said Alice. The king turned pale and shut his notebook hastily. Consider your verdict, he said to the jury in a low, trembling voice. So here is Alice when she stands up and knocks everything and everybody over because she's much larger. There's more evidence to come yet. Please, your majesty, said the white rabbit, jumping up in a great hurry. This paper seems to be a letter written by the prisoner to somebody. That proves his guilt, of course, said the queen. So off with, it doesn't prove anything of the sort, said Alice. Why don't you even know, why you don't even know what it's about? Read it, said the king. The white rabbit put on his spectacles. Where shall I begin? Please, your majesty, he asked. Begin at the beginning and go on till you come to the end, then stop. There was dead silence in the court while the white rabbit read out the verses from the letter. I don't believe there's an atom of meaning in it, said Alice after white rabbit had finished. If there's no meaning in it, that saves a world of trouble, you know, as we needn't try to find any. Let the jury consider their verdict, the king said, for about the 20th time that day. No, no, said the queen. Silence first, verdict afterward. Stuff and nonsense, said Alice loudly. Hold your tongue, said the queen, turning purple. I won't, said Alice. Off with her head, the queen shouted at the top of her voice. Nobody moved. Who cares about you, said Alice, for she had grown to her full size by this time. You're nothing but a pack of cards. At this time, at this, the whole pack rose up into the air and came flying down upon her. So here we are, all of the cards. It is just a pack of cards after all. And then there's the rabbit watching. 
She gave a little scream, half of fright and half of anger, and tried to beat them off. Then she found herself lying on the bank with her head in the lap of her sister, who was gently brushing away some dead leaves that had fluttered down from the trees upon her face. Wake up, Alice dear, said her sister. Why, what a long sleep you've had. Oh, I've had such a curious dream, said Alice, and she told her sister all these strange adventures of hers that you have just been reading about. When she had finished, her sister kissed her and said, it was a curious dream, dear, certainly, but now run in to get your tea. It's getting late. So Alice got up and ran off, thinking what a wonderful dream it had been. Her sister sat still just as she had left her, leaning her head, watching the setting sun, and thinking of little Alice and all her wonderful adventures, until she too began dreaming, began dreaming after a fashion. The long grass rustled at her feet as a white rabbit hurried by. The frightened mouse splashed his way through the neighboring pool. She could hear the rattle of the teacups as the March Hare and his friends shared their never-ending meal, and the shrill voice of the queen ordering her unfortunate guests to execution. Once more, the pig baby was sneezing on the duchess's knee while plates and dishes crashed around it. Once more, the shriek of the griffin mixed up with the distant sobs of the miserable mock turtle. So she sat on with closed eyes and half believed herself in Wonderland, though she knew she had to put, she had but to open them again and all would change to dull reality. She pictured to herself how little Alice would eventually be a grown woman and how she would gather around her children and make their eyes bright and eager with many a strange tale, perhaps even with the dream of the Wonderland of long ago, and how she would find a pleasure in remembering her own childhood and the happy summer days. So, Alice wakes up in her sister's lap, so it was all just a crazy dream. And that's the end with the white rabbit by the sunset. All right, so that is the end of that crazy story called Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you want to read the original story, you can always find this at the library or online. So check out your local library and see if you can find this book so that you can read it on your own. And there's many different versions. And I do believe this is pretty close to the original version because you won't see all of those characters in the movies usually. Um, they only have certain characters because it, it, it can be very quite confusing with all the characters. All right. I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you and have a great day today and enjoy the rest of your week. Stay safe. Bye-bye.